This is one of the easiest books I've ever made and I want to show you how it was done. Hello arty friends, it's Lee here. Thanks for joining me. Big welcome back to all my lovely subscribers who've been with me forever and a day and a warm welcome to anyone who might be here for the first time. So today I'm going to show you how to make a no-sew art journal. So this one requires no stitching whatsoever and uh, it's very easy to make. The hardest thing about it is folding the pages, the pieces of paper straight, as you can see. <laughs> and then basically we're just gluing them together. So I'm making mine out of 9 by 12 watercolour paper. That's 200 GSM. Um, you can make this uh, out of anything you like. You can use mixed media paper, you can use book pages, you can use copy paper. I wouldn't recommend using a paper that's too light if it's going to be used as an art journal though. So I love the weight of this paper. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. It's just right. So I'm doing this for a challenge. I'm doing a challenge that I'm naming Maggie May and I'll do another video explaining what that's all about in a couple of days time. Okay, so for the challenge, there's going to be 13 projects to do. So I decided to use seven sheets of this watercolour paper and I've folded them in half, trying to keep them as even as possible. And once I'd folded them in half and pressed them with the bone folder, I turned them back the other way and folded them again just to make sure that they fold nice and easily and then I cut six pieces of my hinge paper and my hinge paper is probably about double the weight of a normal piece of copy paper so six of them and then folded them in half lengthwise press them down nice and tightly um, and I did find that you can't trust the measurement of your paper from what's written on the front of your watercolour pad because it said 9 by 12 and it actually turned out to be 9.5 by 12 so I needed to cut an extra 6 pieces because I didn't want these shorter ones on there. So I cut some new ones and you'll see when I go to glue this first one down this is when I realise that they weren't the right length. So check that. So, you know the old saying, measure twice, cut once. So, I didn't do that. So, I was that much short on each end. So, okay, take two. I've cut some new ones. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to glue one of the outsides of these hinges, like so, and stick it onto the folded edge of the piece of watercolour paper. Press it down, wipe away any of the excess glue and then apply glue to the other side of the hinge and place the next signature on the folded edge. Now I'm making sure that my um, signatures line up nice and neatly. Doesn't matter if there's a tiny bit of difference in them but if you don't line them up, you know, and each time you put one on, you're out by half a millimetre or so. By the time you get to the end, you're going to have a difference of, you know, your book's going to be about a centimetre out of whack. So, you don't want that. Okay, so then I continue to add more hinges and more signatures together. So, glue them together. So, I've now switched to my art glitter glue. I just found it less messy than the other glue. So the glue goes on the outside of the hinge and then the folded edge of the hinge goes along the folded edge of the signature which is the watercolour sheet folded in half. And it's just a matter of continuing until all the signatures are in or in place 
and every time I do one I check it to make sure that it's lining up nice and neatly so there's no overhanging pages and it all looks tidy. Um, one thing with the art glitter glue is it dries really quickly so you don't have the wiggle room that you've got if you're using a PB, uh, PVA or something like that uh, or if you were using um, Fabri-Tac you haven't got that little bit of time to move things around so it's important to get it in the right place the first time and always check that there's no glue seeping out from underneath these hinges so I wiped and wiped and wiped them several times but each time I went back there was always another little bit of glue to be wiped out so I, I just continually kept doing that so putting the glue I changed to uh, gluing along the spine or the fold of the signature and then putting the hinge on top I just found that I was a little bit more accurate um, that's just uh, my little idiosyncrasy there uh, you might be fine with doing it the way I was doing it in the first place putting the glue on the hinge and then placing it on the the paper but I found it easier for me to put the glue onto the signature and then put the hinge on top so double checking again looking for any glue seepage checking that everything's lined up and then doing the next one Okay, so that's that bit of the book completed, so the actual pages. It's time to think about a cover. Now, the way this cover is made is really easy. You're basically going to be just sticking a piece of cardboard on the front and the back page. So I'm just going to cut two pieces of cardboard, and I'm going to cover mine in a gel print. So I'll um, cut the cardboard just slightly bigger than the pages, cover it in gel print and then I'll attach it to the book. Something I did do off camera was to round the corners of my pages. Um, I wasn't going to and then I decided to. I just like that look so that's entirely up to you whether you want to do that. I'm cutting my cover pieces just a little bit bigger than the actual pages themselves, probably allowing about a quarter of an inch extra.
Now this bit is optional. I just like the idea of having the actual signatures or the spine covered up. So I've torn a strip of a light cotton fabric and I think it's about two inches wide and I'm going to glue that over the spine of the book. And when I glue my covers on that is going to cover over the excess of that fabric and all you'll see is the little strip down the actual spine. And apart from looking nice, this is just going to be a little bit more, you know, strengthening of the spine. I mean, the book's not going to fall to pieces without this fabric being there. But, um, yeah, it's just a little, you know, I don't know what you'd call it, a safety net maybe. Um, but, yeah, you do not have to do this unless you want to. So once I get this on and I've trimmed the excess fabric off, I'll go through and have a look between the pages again to make sure that none of that glue has seeped out uh, in, in between the pages. So it's just a final check to make sure that there's no glue in there that could cause a bit of problem later on. So even though I can't see glue I still wipe it over. So I'll put this aside now and I'll um, select some paper to cover those bits of cardboard with. I've got this bit of, um, like it's a rice paper type or calligraphy paper type thing. It's on a roll and one, one day when I was bored I just sat there with various inks and paints and just covered it in marks. So I got about three meters of this um, decorated paper and um, it's going to be perfect for my cover. So I've selected a, bit, a couple of sections of it and I'm going to use a PVA glue to stick it on. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll wrap the corners, so trim off the excess, cut the corners off, wrap them around and glue them down. I'll do that with both of them. And then it's a matter of gluing those covers down onto the page block. So I'm going to put some sheets of baking paper between the covers and just add a couple of heavy books on onto the top of the book and leave it to sit and let the glue dry overnight 
and this is the finished book so there's this uh, cloth spine cover and this is what it looks like um, I probably could have made my cover a little smaller I have an uneven gap at the top and the bottom but that was mainly because I it was the way I placed it down and I didn't realize I hadn't centered it properly so uh, it's about a quarter of an inch on one you know at the top or the bottom and about an eighth of an inch at the other so um yeah it's it's nothing I mean if it was going to sell this book I would not um let it go like it is I would fix that up but as it's just for me to have fun in it's fine so there we have it the art journal ready to be used for the Maggie May art challenge now you don't have to have a watercolor pad or watercolor paper to make a book like this you can use a shopping bag you can use pages out of an old book such as maybe a like an old atlas you know some of them have got quite heavy heavy um, paper you just need something a little bit sturdy if you're going to be using wet media on it so my book is going to be an art journal it's going to have paint it's going to have gesso it's going to have inks thrown at it I want my pages not to fall apart and that's why I chose to use watercolor paper um, manila folders is a good option so you just cut your folder down to the size you want and stick them together they're already folded in half for you so that's half the work done um, but anyway I hope this has given you an idea of how easy it is to make an art journal and I'll probably make a couple more later on like without a, a hard cover and you know do a few variations now don't forget to tune in in a couple of ta days time I'm going to tell you all about the Maggie May challenge so not really a challenge just a month of fun playing with paints I hope you'll join me with that 13 projects to do so I'll let you know all about them in my next video so I'll see you then take care hugs and cheers from Australia hooroo